Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, this is our Let's Play by email with the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and I believe it's now March 31st, maybe? My gosh, this game has moved along, it's had all kinds of action, it's been everything I hoped it would be. Now, what are we looking for this time? We're going to watch the combat resolution. Uh, we have a couple of his light cruisers off the northwest tip of Australia, and we're now in full chase mode with uh, three cruisers of our own, a number of light cruisers and destroyers. Uh, as you may remember, we had a, a big naval battle last time. We had two battleships that were coming into Perth. They just so happened to uncover uh, these two uh, cruisers and several light cruisers that he had. We dispatched with one of the cruisers. Uh, we damaged another one. We're going to see if during that chase we can get the rest of that task force to the bottom of the sea. Uh, he's also in our hex in Rangoon. We are going to lose Rangoon this turn. I suppose we're going to. Uh, I hope we can hold off another turn, but it doesn't seem likely. That is a huge point drain for us. I think we lose about 1,200 points if we lose Rangoon. Uh, we can't let him go any further. I mean, you know, he's getting us down on points to the point where we just can't, you know, we couldn't allow him to get into India or Australia, or we're going to have a really, really tough time uh, in from a point perspective. Um, other things going on, well, stuff in and around Port Moresby, although he has taken Port Moresby. Uh, we have a lot of subs out there. Hopefully, we're going to catch some cargo ships. Uh, China's always very interesting. He's been very aggressive in China, but we're now responding, so we'll see how that goes. But let's get into it, and let's see what happens on March 31st and April 1st, April Fool's Day of 1942. And in we go. And we're off. Lodrick didn't give me any clues. Usually when he sends something back, he'll say, uh, if he had a good turn, he'll say the sea is red <laughs> with fire. And I'm always like, oh, God, I don't want to even open up this file right now. Other times he'll say, oh, it was a tough day for the, uh, for the Japanese. So he usually gives me a clue. This time, not so much. There you saw it. Our task force uh, was reacting to the two task forces he's broken up to broken up into off the northwest uh, corner of Australia there. So uh, we'll see. I think we're going to get some action because we should be able to close on him very quickly. We've got a lot of 30-knot ships out there that should be able, and he should be damaged uh, or have some damage there. So I doubt he's going to be able to get away. Uh, but, you know, I expected a lot better results when we had our two battleships out there, um, you know, but he, he really held in pretty strong we had the one battleship that actually took quite a bit of damage uh did not sink uh we did sink his cruiser for sure and then he's got another one that was very very damaged so we'll see if we can catch up with him all right we're doing our coast watcher report here and now the naval reaction phase and hopefully we're closing on those task forces now eventually he's going to send a carrier down there now that he knows where we have our the vast majority of our fleet oh enemy task force interesting okay well this is out by norfolk island i believe uh it looks like he's maybe got two battleships here uh this is just a little akl yeah he's got two full battleships interesting um it's kind of dangerous for him to have this down here. Now, this was a one-point cargo ship. I had this on continuous supply out of Auckland. So, you know, no no biggie there, uh, one point. Uh, but now we know he's got a couple of battleships here. Man, I wish I had my American carriers over here. We would do, Now, he may be setting a trap for that, but we would certainly go out here and look over the situation. So the Nevadan goes down... Oh, here we go. This is what I was hoping for. Yes, Dutch sub, and we have now hit a Japanese ship. I sent all of our Dutch subs up into this area because he had a lot of ships at Ballypopman trying to get the fuel out. 
or oil out, whatever it may be. Um, and we have now hit an ACM here. Very nice. Uh, those are worth a few points, uh, usually. Uh, and so a Dutch sub finally gets some joy out here. Yep, we're reacting. There's going to be a big naval battle out here. And <laughs> here we come, boys. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, we brought the Armada. What is this? The Spanish in 1588. Uh, we've got, uh, these are all cruisers. Uh, we've got a lot of light cruisers. A couple of them on fire, actually. That looks like a cruiser as well. Uh, but this, we should be, oh, those are two destroyers. Okay, you can see cruisers, light cruisers. We had a huge fleet over here. And let's talk about that for a second. You don't have, with the Australians, a lot of these are Australian ships, a few American ships like the Houston, uh, but you see the cruiser Australia, the cruiser Canberra, those are Australian ships. You don't have the big capital ships, the battleships, the carriers uh, for Australia. What you have are some cruisers and quite a few light cruisers. Now, I also have some Dutch light cruisers in here. I like to put them all together uh, because otherwise they don't really have a choice on anything. You know, they don't have a choice, a chance against anything. As you can see, we've now taken out these two Japanese destroyers. He did get a shell hit in on the, uh, Marish the Mauritius. Uh, we took a shell hit one, but that's all we suffered. And we sink, well, one is sunk. One has heavy damage, probably won't make it back. Uh, really, some of our first uh, true good, good, good results uh, against the Japanese Navy. We'll take that. You can see his task forces up by Colombo are now moving out. Okay. We're, we're spotting Japanese aircraft, so he's bringing his carriers down to this area. Okay. Um, that's not good because we've got a lot of transports up here. Yep, we're going to be in trouble there. We've got some high value transports that are up there. Now they've dropped off their entire load, but we very, very well may lose those as he's brought those down by the islands. Now, hopefully they just snooped and we can disband these task forces, um, into port so at least we have a and we do have a lot of cap up and above nomaya so we'll see uh we're it's not like a bomb base situation where we didn't have enough cap over the top of our task forces at nomaya we do and we've got some good planes there as well we've also got some torpedo bombers there and maybe we can get a shot in okay he uh goes and sweeps over Changsha. all righty Now he's bombing to the east of Yan'an. Now I have turned this group around. I'm going to try to go there. They don't have much uh, ass, attack value or assault value. I'm going to try to put him on this road, though, to cut his supply into Yan'an if we can. Of course, we're going to get the crap bombed out of us here. Three damage sallies, 58 casualties there. All right, 13 sallies in on the second time around. They get nothing. Even though light clouds, they do not hit target. That's unusual for his very well-trained bombers out here now. Now they're going to bomb just north of Wu Chow. This is the group that got knocked out of Wu Chow. Uh, they're, I've just got them moving slowly back here. I've got more forces coming around, and we're going to set up shop here in a very defensible hex. This is all pretty mountainous out here. Uh, easier to defend. We damage four planes. We take 18 casualties. We'll take that every time. It was, again, just light clouds. All right, he's got uh, 20 or so bombers coming in here uh, to the north of Ai Chang. Now, I've got some cavalry units here, and I'm sending them out. I'm going to try to get on these roads and, again, cut his supply if we can. Uh, I'm trying to fight more of a partisan war here in China. 70 casualties reported on the ground. Now, this group is the group that got kicked out of Palembang. Uh, they're trying to make it back here to Bank Delen, uh, and they're on the move. And when they're on the move, the Japanese bombers come uh, shortly thereafter. 115 casualties reported. Again, north of Wu Chow here. 
with 19 Sonyas, we take six casualties on the ground, and then 12 more bombers come in, no casualties. Again, these are those cavalry units. The, the minute we start to move, his bombers immediately start hitting. Uh, eight casualties reported on the ground there. Six more lilies come in. Now, these units don't really have any anti-aircraft, and so we're not going to damage nearly as many planes. They are cavalry units, so they're, you know, speed, uh, but not as much AA. 32 casualties reported. Sixteen Sonyas, and now this group has just sat down here forever. Uh, the the stack that he has here does not have enough strength really to knock us out of here. And I've been going back and forth whether to actually attack him, uh, but I haven't yet. I haven't yet. Sixteen Sonyas, uh, partial cloud. He misses again, so he hasn't had as nearly as much success bombing here. And again. Okay, these are our fortresses, B-17Ds, coming in. Um, yeah, uh, whoever put in the comments that uh, the strategic bombers usually came in at twenty to 25,000 feet, you are correct. Now, there doesn't seem to be any zeros in this area or other Japanese fighters. And so I'm having them come in lower, actually, at 8,000 feet. Now, B-17s, do you want them coming in at 8,000 feet? Eh, maybe not. Uh, but we totally miss anyway, even at 8,000 feet. Four 500-pound bombs at Kendari, but uh, we get no joy there. And here come his carriers into Nomaya. 25 zeros, 26 kates, 35 vowels. We have Era Cobras here, uh, but he's gonna he's gonna wreck a task force or two. Uh, these APs are gonna get hurt. All right, we destroyed one zero, damage four kates, damage two vowels. Uh, we had one Era Cobra destroyed. We, let's see, the Harris was hit, but didn't go down. We have a 1.8 AKL up here that took heavy damage. This AP is on fire. Okay, we also have destroyers up here. We have uh, another one point cargo ship that was sunk. Okay, so we've only lost one point so far, but this is just the beginning, right? The Hugh Scott was not hit. Now, these are both like 20-point transports. Uh, the Mugford got hit, the destroyer. The Smith is on fire, and the Rangtiki took heavy damage. All right? I'm surprised we didn't get more aircraft scrambling there. Uh, but now he's going to hit Norfolk Island. We get one lightning up in the air. Okay. Uh, I think that was dispatched with. Now, we just have an AKL out here. That's not the biggest. Oh, wrong. We do have an AP out here. Well, uh, gosh darn it. I didn't realize we had a transport there. Uh, we did destroy one Kate by Flak. The lightning was destroyed. And the one-point cargo ship was sunk, but the AP has stayed alive somehow. That's only like an eight-point transport ship, I hope. Uh, I hope, certainly. We're going to have a hard time getting these task forces uh, out of here in one piece. I was trying to put something on that island. Now, I've already got a base force on that island out there. Um, What was that? I just saw that we had a task force run into one of his task forces. I guess we'll come back around to it. Really surprised we didn't have more Era Cobras get up in the air uh, there at Nomaya. I mean, we've got at least 25 there, but I think we've got other fighters there as well. Okay, he's coming in and bombing just north of Port Moresby. Two damaged planes, 24 casualties. He has not bombed Colombo yet this turn. 
Uh, he's we've spotted a lot. Okay, this is the group that got kicked out of Yanan, and it's been taking forever. I'm trying to just completely stifle his supply here. He's got a massive force in both of these two hexes. This is my massive force here, and so we've just got kind of a standoff, an old West standoff here. Uh, but this unit has, or these units, I mean, there's a lot of them. He's got 100,000 troops here. They have got to be starving for supply because we've got every roadway into Cyan cut off, which is what I wanted. One damage Sonya. We did take 90 casualties. All right, 19 Ida's in there. We take another 37 casualties. Now, these two groups are linking up. God, I hope I can get those transports out. We're, you know, we're on the verge of having a very good turn here if we don't lose all of these transports that are here at Nomai. I was hoping not to see that. Uh, we got seven Era Cobras in the air, and let's see if they could do any damage. Well, all right, he's in on these ships. We'll see how much damage we take. And then we chase him back out. One damage Kate, one damage Val. That's not good enough. Era Cobra's one destroyed. Uh, we lose a destroyer. We lose a transport. We have another destroyer that's heavy damage. The AP Hugh Scott heavy fires. Another destroyer is sunk. AKL with damage. Uh, the AP here sunk. This AP, the Harris, has not been sunk yet. Wow, gosh darn it. He caught us uh, again. Uh, we get one lightning up here, but these lightnings aren't going to do anything uh, against Japanese zeros, and we're probably going to lose everything that's out here. Man, this is going to be a lot of points. Um, the Maori is sunk. The Wahin is on fire. The Mariposa has heavy damage. Well, we got to make up for it for by sinking some of his light cruisers off of Australia there. We took down two destroyers, but he has hit a lot of our transports uh, out here in the South Pacific. You can see us losing more ships here in and around Nomaya. It was smart for him to come down here. We've had kind of free reign out here um, to do what we want. And we have dropped a lot of troops off out here, to be you know, honest. I mean, you know, we've gotten more out here than I thought we would. We'd now lose the Hugh Scott you saw. Uh, okay, he's going to bombard here at Gasmata. Uh, the group out of Rabal had retreated down to Gasmata. They have not had any supply for probably 10 turns. And so they're, they're not long for the world. Now, he takes 35 casualties unloading, but it's just a matter of time until he, t he kicks us out of Gasmata. Really surprised our cap over Nomaya didn't do a better job. That's what I was counting on, but uh, unfortunately... That has not been the case. Land move attack phase. Let's see if we get a battle of Rangoon. Uh, no, he's going to bombard us in this hex again. This is, you know, the third or fourth turn in a row. He's just bombarded us here. He seems a little reticent to go on the full attack. He takes nine casualties. We take 76. You can see we've got almost 100,000 troops here. He's got like 80,000 troops here, but it was just a bombardment. So he may actually have a, little, a few more. It doesn't always count all of them. Uh, Japanese bombardment here. This is that hex I was talking about uh, where, you know, listen, he uh, doesn't have enough strength to kick us out of here, really. Uh, so he's bombarding us. Five casualties reported there. And here comes the Battle of Rangoon. We're likely to be kicked out of Rangoon here. And that's going to be a huge... Whoa! We held on! Look at that. Our adjusted defense 
Here's the raw value, 1821 to 328. Wow, but once you go to the adjusted, he must really be hurting for supply. I mean, he, that's the only explanation. Look at this adjusted assault. Uh, we get pluses for the terrain and the leaders. He takes 785 casualties. It's a deliberate attack. He takes 785. We take a little over 1,000, but we hold on. And he did not take our fort level down. Fort level one, you can see he didn't take the fort level down. So we lived to fight another day in Rangoon. Gosh, I wish I would have built it up more. He didn't, I don't know that he brought enough to just, you know, absolutely overwhelm us here. He's taking another base there in Celebus. Okay, we didn't have anything there. Now he's taking a base down in the Dutch East Indies, uh, just north of Timor. Uh, you know, we didn't have anything there. Now, what we have left, they're going to have to surrender. Uh, we just don't, you know, these are just base forces out here. We did, you know, they, they have nothing left. Once we got kicked out of Surubaya, uh, we had 639 men left. They just surrendered. Now he's taking another base in Celebus as he consolidates the entire island here. We had nothing there again. Tajilla Jap. Okay, he is not going to take to Jap with what he's got here now. It's a deliberate... Oh, I'm sorry. This is our deliberate attack. I actually uh, decided to attack him here, if you can believe that. We took 408 casualties, though. So, well, we won't do that again. Um, I saw that he just had a small force here. I was hoping to overwhelm them. That ends up not being a good idea, because even though he's got, well, 660, he's got 660 troops. We've got 6,500. He does have some tanks, but so do we. You know, it was 88 to 55. How in the world did he not lose any men? How is that even possible? I mean, just like somebody tripped and, and fell and hit their head or something. Boy, I don't understand that result at all. That actually uh, was going to, I mean, it looked a little better than I thought it would. Uh, but anyway, okay, well, it is what it is. In the war in the East, two streams, that means you have to drink. When I say it is what it is, uh, well, I'm going to put those guys back on defense, I'll tell you that. But holy mackerel, I, would, I don't know how he didn't lose one man or, you know, a tank or something. I don't know, something the track fell off of it. All right, just cycling through all the different phases. We really need to sink a couple of light cruisers now uh, to even this up. Those APs we lost really hurts. I mean, we've just had such freedom to move down there. Okay, we get a new SS, we get a new AO, a new KV. Uh, we get a new squadron of, um, those were two Marine squadrons. We get a new RAF squadron. See, we got quite a bit in this time. It's now April 1st, 1942. So we've now entered April. As you've been watching this game, well, hold on. Well, let's uh, see what happens here. It's a bombardment. Uh, they're unloading here uh, at Gas Mata. As you've been watching this game, um, I think what you've seen is what you really want with your transports is you can only, you know, only try to send eight or ten point transports up to places where his carriers may even possibly be, because we've lost so many points on transports. Uh, just trying to get extra troops into places. You know, we've really fortified Nomaya, Suva, but we've lost a 
gob of points. Oh, well, he's got a sub out here. And we did, oh, he hit our battleship. My gosh, with a torpedo hit, we took heavy damage. Now, this was already damaged. We did get a hit. Now, I had a destroyer with the Ramillies trying to get into Perth. Uh, let's pray that doesn't go down. I mean, that's, that's uh, game-changing if we lose another British battleship off the coast of Perth. Uh, can't have that. Now, usually those things are pretty sturdy, but if you get a torpedo in the wrong place, it doesn't matter how sturdy the ship is. Um, let's hope that's not the Ramillies. Let's hope this is our destroyer that finds him. Yeah. Okay, so the Panther's trying to chase him off. Goodness gracious. Okay, he's landing at Nadini as he's starting now to expand down here by Luganville. Afate. This is where the war is really going to get hot uh, because I will fight, you know, as hard as we can for Luganville and Afate uh, because that, you know, that really opens up him getting into our shipping lanes for everything. All right. This is a uh, more invasion support, invasion support off Gazmata. Yep, he's bringing stuff down here, and this is... I, I wondered whether he was going to try to hop over to Australia or come down to the southeast here and keep expanding this way, and he is now landed at Nadini, so this, this thing's going to get really interesting. Uh, well, it's been really interesting, but even more so. Um, Gazmata, he again is unloading there. Really hoping we click over to the northwest part of, you know, off of Australia there. You can see he's coming back to Singapore with his carriers, uh, you know. We spotted those ships out there, those Japanese ships off the northwest end of Australia. I keep coming back to that because we need the points. And we also need to let him know if he comes down that way, he's going to, you know, face some resistance, certainly. He has not moved this army towards Batavia yet. We have a really strong force there. Everything is congregated there. Uh, bombing here just to the east of Cyan. Uh, one damaged plane, 156 casualties. Now he's bombing just north of Wu Chow. Uh, we get four damaged planes and 47 casualties on the ground. Twelve Vitas in north of Wu Chow. Thirteen Sonyas coming in on that same group. And he missed twice there with his bombing runs. Uh, the cavalry that I was talking about before, he's steadily bombing them. Fifty-four casualties there. Ten Ands. Fourteen casualties. Now he's bombing the group that got kicked out of Palombang. 27 ands in on that. No planes were damaged. Six casualties on the ground. He's going to try it again. Uh, it's heavy rain here. One damage, Sally. 39 casualties. Yeah, that whole battle just north of Nomaya, north of Luganville, Afate, that is going to be uh, where the struggle happens, folks. 22 Sonya's in here, uh, bombing these guys again. He misses. It's moderate rain out here. Six Lilies in on the cavalry stack. 31 casualties, so he's slowly whittling them down as he does. Again, I'm just trying to send them out and cut supply lines. They're, casual, or they're cavalry units. I'm going to try to use their speed. Get out here on the road. Get here. Get here. If we can. If we end up losing those units, well, okay. You've got manpower in China. That's the thing you've got. 
man, I was really surprised we held Rangoon there and had a higher adjusted value than he did. He's running out of steam. Now he's got a lot of troops there, uh, but they must just be having real supply problems. All right, reporting ships, reporting ships. Oh, we reported that we hit a destroyer out there with one of our uh, recon planes. So when you put them on naval search, I mean, they still have, you know, sometimes bombs, uh, every once in a while, torpedoes. Uh, they can hit things, and we've reported that we hit a destroyer out there. Uh, 16 Bettys, 25 Nels. I mean, this group is done for. I think they're almost, uh, they've almost starved to death. 35 casualties, one damage. I mean, this is like the stuff movies and books are made out of. They get kicked out of Moresby. They're in the swamp. I'm trying to move them to a hex where they can forage, uh, but it hasn't worked so far because we keep getting bombed, bombed, bombed. Gosh, I hope our battleship survives and gets into Perth. Uh, here come those B-17s again uh, on Kendari. Let's see if anything... No, these guys, these guys are poorly trade bobadiers. They can't hit the broadside of a barn. Okay, well, he's going to hit him again. That's actually coming out of Rabal. And I got a little fooled that, you know, where his carriers were. Now, I knew some of this bombing was coming out of Rabal, but it, it seems that all of it is uh, because obviously his carriers are fur further short or uh, further south now. Boy, I'm going to be really interested for this setup phase. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you know, uh, Lodric always sends up. Yep, there he is. He's unloading at Nadini. Uh, Gasmata, he's going to continue bombarding that, but these troops don't have much left in them. All right, we did not get to those light cruisers over by Australia. Very surprised. I didn't think they could outrun us because I thought that they were damaged, uh, but we're going to keep searching anyway. Okay, uh, Japanese bombardment again in that same hex just south of Cyan. Again, trying to disrupt us. Um, at some point, somebody's going to make a move here, but whom? Uh, he took 15 casualties. We took 96 on the bombardment. Same thing down here. Japanese bombardment to the southeast, just north of Fu Chao. He took eight casualties, so we had a gun that misfired, evidently. Uh, ground combat in Rangoon. Can we continue to hold? Gosh, let's hope so. Again, look at this. Seven on the raw. His attacking force, it's only, oh, it's bombardment. Gosh, I hate when I do that. His bombardment. Okay, so he's bombarding. He lost six guns. We took 12 casualties. Okay. Okay. Uh, the longer we can hold on there, the better. Now, uh, to Jillajap, we're deliberately attacking him. We again get a really nice raw score, but you can see the adjusted. Not quite as good. We take 207 casualties. He takes none, somehow. I, I don't really understand that at all. I mean, you could say, well, he's in tanks. So, uh, you know, we just didn't hit a tank. I guess I guess that's your explanation. All right, this is coming to the end of the turn. Oh, that wasn't the best turn for us. Uh, he really caught us with our pants down a little bit there at Nomaya. I thought our cap would perform better. It seems like we didn't get a whole lot of planes up in the damn air. Um, and he took out quite a few transports. Now, usually up there, I'm not going to have a really high value transports. 
Yeah, we're beginning refit. So on April 1st, uh, I've got everything set to go in and refit. That's going to give the out these allied ships uh, a lot more AA. Sometimes it makes them faster. Sometimes it gives them bigger guns. But you can see everything that's going in to refit here at Pearl Harbor. Um, in a minute, oh, I say in a minute, in a few turns, we're going to have all four of the carriers out here completely refit and we're going to start doing something with them. April 1st is really a dividing line in this game. Uh, we, you know, all of these, and I will say with refit, it really, they're going to refit at the same speed regardless of what else you have in the shipyard it seems um i don't know why it quite works that way but that's always been my experience that really refit doesn't have this it doesn't like put them in the shipyard um that slows everything else down even though they're in the shipyard at least that's been my experience you guys may have had something different but i've always felt like you know it doesn't really affect the other ships in the shipyard but we'll go look at all of that next time when we set up all of these ships we've got on refit now and we'll see what it's doing uh for those ships uh, i can tell you with the carriers it upped their aa score from like 600 to 1700 so, I mean, it makes a heck of a big difference. So anyway, uh, you know, we had a few good things happen. Those destroyers we sunk, but those are fairly low value ships uh, for the Japanese. He's got numbers of those. Um, we got, we lost a lot of transports down by Nomaya. You know, ultimately we've got a lot of transports, but it's points. You know, I keep coming back to that. He's trying to do better than the Japanese did historically. And uh, the, you know, the more points he can rack up, that's how this game is played. So anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Lots of action. I love it. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Talk to you next time.